welcome to another video uh, thanks all that came to the uh, last video saw a bit of the strip down I'm gonna try and make a bit more of an effort today to answer a few of the questions in the previous video as they're coming in that went up live Friday it's now Saturday so they'll not all be there but I'll try and hit a few of them um, connected. it's connected uh, so as well as that I'll try and run you through a few more of the parts um, where I got them from bits and pieces like that because it's things that I get asked a million times uh, I'm just trying to get things in the van this morning and I can't it's frozen the doors are literally frozen it took me an hour long to get in the driver's door because it's uh, it's a little bit cold <laughs> so yeah that's where we're at um, I'm gonna let this defrost a little bit, get down to the farm, we'll get the fire lit and we'll get started with some work, all right? <laughs> right, excuse the look, it's still, it's still like minus three in here. So what we're doing now, I'm just getting everything out on the flatbed now, so any parts we need, we can just come over and get. What I've done is I've spent a small fortune um, on fixtures, fittings, brackets, little bits and pieces, which technically, yes, I could pull off the old bulkhead, but, but, here's the big but, them parts have been in for 33 years. Um, I think if you keep all the little plastic bits, all the old screws, as you know, you're gonna have to use odd bits. There's no getting around it. But if you're using all the old fixtures and fittings that have got 33 years of the wear, off-road, uh, jiggling about and stuff, this is why a lot of old Land Rovers squeak and rattle on things because the fixtures and fittings aren't that great. So been out, got all the new clips, all the new odds and sods i mean some of these bits are all makes and bare mac and things like that no they're not genuine parts yes i know there is better parts out there however this is the parts that i could get on hand off the shelf as i'm passing for work um this is one of them things that's been kind of moved forward and moved forward uh so i'm just i'm moving where i can so luckily molten's off road i'm passing that multiple times in a week and stuff and andy there has been dead helpful because I ain't got a clue, so I've just gone in and gone, what do I need for a bulkhead change? And he's gone through it, he's got a big list, we've stood, gone through it all and everything, and he's, we've worked out what I've already got, what I need, um, and yeah, he's sorted it. The other thing with these builds is, just bear in mind, this is an expensive part of it, because although it doesn't look it, uh, by the time you've got a new power steering box, a recon one, um, because mine's up to its maximum amount of um, adjustment already, so there's not much more before that's gone. And once everything's back together, it'll be a pain. It's a bill that I didn't want now, but I'd be crazy not to change it now if that makes sense. So, yeah, I've got another one of them. Uh, I've got all the seals and stuff for the heater box. I've got little things like the check arms. These are all right on the one I've got. They're just rusty, tatty, bent, worn. So all these bits and pieces, you know, these are the six to 10 pounds items that add up when you've got multiples of. I mean, just this little pile here, there's between the wiper motor, wiper arms, all the seals, brackets, bits and pieces, brake bias valves, power steering box, stuff like that. There's just shy of a thousand pound. So, when you do the bulkhead change and the bulkhead's costing you um like 12 1300 pounds uh it's it soon soon adds up um and unfortunately it's one of them bills that you can't kind of just ignore and, and not do loads of people asking me about the bulkhead is there any warpage or is there any things like that let's go over there and look so the only so the only issue that we really had was because we've got the engine out, because we've got the uh, cross member between the chassis out already, when we took all that out and then we took the bulkhead off, when we put the new bulkhead on, it was half a bolt out from going through. Um, luckily, Mark's a, a, graded, a coded welder, blacksmith, you name it, he knows metal inside out. Um, as you can tell by the grinder squint that he had going, which is mega technique we put a ch had to put a chain block here because what he was saying is the sprass uh, the spassy the chassis uh two lengths of steel um there's so much pressure on it uh without all the bits and pieces retaining it it had moved out ever so slightly i don't know whether people would class that as warpage or anything like that but he, he wasn't phased in any way shape or form we put a chain put a chain block on ratcheted it moved it in a, a touch put the bolts in jobs are good and the doors so but what we did i don't know whether other people are doing this and they're not and they're just tightening everything up and then getting to the last piece and it not working for them and that's why they think there's warpage but the tolerance on these is huge 
Um, I mean, as you can see, they're not the proper doors for this. It should have the slidey windows, not the, the windy windows. Um, little bits and pieces. These are all made for different defenders all put together. And obviously there's going to be differences. So what we did is every bolt was put in, but not put in tight. So you could still adjust it until the point where the windscreen met nicely. All the seals were good there. Then we closed all the doors and made sure they were all nice. Then we nicked up all the bolts everywhere and made sure we could open and shut the doors properly. Um, if we couldn't, uh, there's a couple of instances where, say, one door was a little bit too far forward or too far back, we'd then loosen a couple of nuts off, adjust that, and then tighten it all back up again. And that's okay. Um, as far as warpage, I don't know what people are... Because when I did my research on this, no end of people came back and said the shielder chassis weren't great. Um, they've had no end of issues with it, but I don't know where the warpage would be. Maybe if you put your hand along here, there's a slight bit of undulation. I don't know whether that would be what people are worried about or... But then again, I've had, I've had totally factory ones that have been like this, so I don't, I don't know what the... There is a little bit of undulation there, but then we'll come over to the old one. And that, that does it. So, and this is a factory one. I don't know, maybe that's, maybe that's what people are worried about. You know, these thinner plates, something like that. But as a whole, I can't complain. This one here, was off eBay, um, it's just random. I was going through it and I went to distance first because I'm one of them weirdos that likes to go and pay cash and pick things up. Um, got talking to the fella and wow, he couldn't have been more helpful. He actually, um, he strips down Land Rovers, takes the parts off, reconditions them, galves them, sells them. He also builds Land Rovers up and restores them. So he was a wealth of knowledge, really, really nice guy. We ended up stood talking for a couple of hours because. Land Rover Geeks. Um, he was from, if you go on eBay and there's bulkheads for sale in Ghoul, that was him. That's G O O L E. Um, he doesn't have a website or anything like that. What I can do is in the description box below, I'll put his mobile number. Like I said, really helpful guy. Don't pester him on a night or anything like that, but obviously, um, in working hours, he's the guy that I would highly recommend just because he was knowledgeable, helpful, um, and yeah, really accommodating. Uh, what he did was, this is actually a TD5 bulkhead, um, because he strips, refurbs and all the rest of it, he has all the brackets and stuff, makes all the brackets up for what you need, um, and he's put all the 300 TDI gear on that I need for this, uh, and that's the combination he did, because that was the best one that he could think of, so I'll, I'll roll with that, because when you go in and see the projects he's working on, it fills you full of confidence that he knows what he's talking about. So, yeah, that's that one. Uh, if I had a bit longer on this project, little bits like the brake servo, I would either have liked to get a new one or strip that down, cleaned it, primed it, painted it black and stuff, but I only have this workshop space for a limited amount of time, so it's going to be one of them ones where um, it's just get the thing back together in working order, uh, then worry about cosmetics later, because realistically this all has to go back together get it all working um as i've kind of hinted towards there's a potential of quite a big project collaboration thing with yeah it, it, if it comes off it'd be good so hopefully i'll get the kickstart this year because last year none of the other youtubers or anybody really wanted to know they're all just doing their own little click so it's a bit of a to them isn't it uh, <laughs> Once this is done, obviously I've, I've been rubbing down the roof and everything. So while we're in the dry, before we pull this out, I'm going to wrap to coat all the roof. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to roller this one. Um, so one, it goes on thicker, and two, I don't get any overspray on mixed tractors or anything like that. So that's kind of the plan with that one. And then if I can get some aluminium extrusion, I'm going to take the steel out of the, because um, it's all steel framed because I can stick metal together in my garden. I'm going to get the aluminium extrusion if I can. And I'm looking at getting um, new fronts for all the cupboards. So if there's anybody local to Doncaster or anything like that with camper conversion places uh, that wants to do a bit, I want to get it all laser cut out to my specs um, and bolted too. Uh, I'm going to do it a bit different where I don't 
just screw all the wood together and that's the structure i want to build an aluminium frame first put all the sliders in all that lot and i just need a company to cut all the bits out uh, that i can then fasten onto which it's a little bit different but i kind of want to try it that way if that makes sense so that's where we're at right i'm gonna get a brew i'm gonna make sure this fire's going and we'll get a bit more work done so what i'm doing now <clears throat> with these old heater boxes and stuff I couldn't, uh, I couldn't find a brand new one. Um, found a second hand one that the motor's in good order, the matrix is in good order, uh, and all the little switches and stuff work. Downside is, it's got the surface, the paint started to come off. It's not rusted yet, but you know when the paint comes off and it stains, because in your engine base, where damp can get in and sit there, so it looks bad real quick. So for what it takes, um, we're just wire brushing the thing down, get it dried down, get some primer on there and stuff, um, and just kind of reseal it before we put the thing back on. Also what we're doing is, see on here, you've got this tatty old rubber, and just here we've got, it's actually a Land Rover one, I must not be able to get to the third party one, and that'll just go on there. Nice good seal, um, when you're off-roading and stuff there's less chance of, you've all seen me go through rivers and seas and things like that, less chance of water flying through here, as well as that, it keeps the warm air where it needs to be going. So again, yeah, uh, concentrating on just round where the metal's actually screwed together, uh, where the screws are, bits and pieces like that, anywhere where the seals get well in there. And again, like I did on the chassis, once this is done, I'll get the blowtorch, warm the metal up, make sure all the moisture's out of it. Uh, once the moisture's out of it, we can give it a wipe down with a bit of thinners, alcohol, whatever, uh, and then give it a prime so it'll actually adhere. Because I think a lot of times people, they'll rub it down, good effort, but then they'll put a bit of paint straight on it with absolutely nothing to make the paint actually stick properly over time. So it looks nice and Gucci, all, all new, on the bulkhead, everything's looking mint, and then six months, nine months down the line, it looks tatty again, and I don't know why. So, I'm guilty of this. I'm the world's worst for, for just banging it on. That'll do, I'll sort it later. Don't get me wrong, I do do that a lot. But, like with this, once this is on, you're not gonna see this bit again to kind of rectify it, if that makes sense. So, this side especially, the front side that you see when you open the engine bay up, not so important, because I can get to that. That's, that's not a problem, but yeah, all these brackets, you can see where the muck and stuff's gone down and it's sat there and it's, that's what's happened to mine, it's where it's sat there and you can't clean, you can't sort out or anything like that and that's what gives you the problems later on in life. This is why people like um, Lee Arnold, who does the, uh, he's building the DAF, uh, you'll see them come to a couple of the meets and stuff. This is why his work is second to none, because he's a classic car restorer. So there is no ifs and buts. Knowing him, he'd probably strip this into 50,000 different pieces and, and clean, treat, rebuild every single one of them and put it back together, then put it on the vehicle. But his will still be around in decades to come. It's, it's how far you want to go with it, isn't it? All those wondering what's happening with the DAF because I get asked constantly about it. Um, yeah, I want to be on with it. I would much rather be spending all Christmas and all my weekends at the minute working on that. Absolutely would rather be doing that. However, with the project that's coming along and with how much this needs it, I can't have two project vehicles. The Land Rover has got to be in good running order at all times. So it's at that point where it needs the work it'll get the work, then once that's done, I know it's taking a big chunk out of the daft build money, um, because obviously the money that I'm spending on a bulkhead engine and all the fixtures and fittings is a hell of a lot out of the budget for putting the kitchen sub chassis bits and pieces on the daft, but that's, that's life, I can't have it always. All I can do is do, a, once this is done, do a bit more work on a weekend, do a bit more work on a night after work, a little bit of overtime, and try and replenish that pot up a bit. But th this is just being a grown up, innit? We, we don't have that luxury, you know, you, you, money just doesn't come from nothing. So there we go.
and this is why <laughs> I'll keep going back to it the Patreons make such a different for the difference for the videos because it allows me to have a pot of money there to replace cameras and to buy editing gear so I don't have a choice of well I need to go out and do this this and this or replace a faulty camera if that makes sense to you so that's why I make such a big deal about those people because they're the ones that keep the channel going and progressing while I do stuff like this so it's not I need to work on the Land Rover or keep the channel going it's eventually with any luck I'll get a commercial sponsor um, or a business or something like that that wants to put some money in in return for um, having you know access to a, a platform that thousands of people watch or um, it'll get to the point where there's enough views that the that Google might actually start paying something uh, and then that, that does it uh, eventually I'd like to put some meets on um, some training courses bits and pieces like that um, and a mixture of that the merchandise when I get round to it um, and make all them things pay but at the minute it is just carry on doing what I'm doing and be thankful that people on Patreon are giving me a drink it's yeah I don't know I mean, if anyone's got a better idea I am open to opinions because like I say I'm a tradesman so it's kind of all alien to me you know when you're looking at like how some people do it um, the way the tag and at and suck up and things like that I mean is is that the way is that how you get commercial because I'm not right comfortable with doing that that's just not me I'd rather work for it and offer a service rather than suck up to a company um, I also think there's more integrity in that as well because I find that if you if you're sucking up and always asking for the oh please give me this oh please work with me on this one you're gonna be biased when they say like well we're gonna take it away from you unless you do I'd rather do it on my terms if that makes sense because then I get to keep my integrity and I know a lot of you lot appreciate that if something's crap I'll tell you it's crap and if something's good I'll tell you it's good um, and I like to think that I've got good integrity um, to the point where I'll say I'll not say bias but I don't know anyone following the channel knows me by now so it's one of them ones you can you can see what I like and what I don't like and I'm, I'm quite vocal about it which I think that's lacking in YouTube now because you only seem to get the either absolutely totally I hate something or you get the non-stop sucking up this is the best thing ever best decision ever um, and then two years later they quietly don't talk about stuff anymore or <laughs> they're not getting the, the sponsorship or the discount or what have you but I don't know I'm learning as I go it's it's a bit of a weird thing YouTube isn't it but the, the other thing as well is is YouTube gonna be the be all and end all because what I would say you see a lot of new YouTubers start and I'm gonna do a video on this I'm gonna do I start to finish how I make a YouTube video video um, once I can get the land out to the woods um, and I'll run you through it I'll run how I film it I'll run from editing um, and things that I think people should and shouldn't do because for years I did YouTube and I didn't really do anything with it I just chucked videos up and it, it was what it was whereas now I'm getting into it I'm I'm watching more and more tutorials on how to do stuff uh, I'm watching you know videos like like Project Amber he's one of the people that I, I, I'm a Patreon of his just because I appreciate the amount of time and effort that goes into his videos um, and I look at stuff like that and that gives you a good knowledge of a recipe that works because when you put a video of his on you kind of he's one of them ones where you go and make yourself a drink before and get yourself comfortable and you sit and you watch it all the way through without skimming and that it takes some doing to do that these days uh, and the way that YouTube works, it's, it's all about them watch minutes. If you don't get the watch minutes and people skip through it, you, you'll never get anywhere. And I think the issue is with a lot of new YouTubers... Um, shall I do this as a separate video? Let me know if it's of interest to you. Um, and I'll, I'll get out, I'll make a brew, and I'll talk through tips, tricks, advice things like that for making a YouTube channel and getting content out there and make it work let us know if that's of, that's of use to you because a few people have asked me these questions and there's no point in me cluttering a rebuild video up with that so yeah if there's interest I'll do it anyway back to this 
So a couple of little bits just before I forget. There's there's actually four bolts up here holding your wings on. Um, the first two are easy to get to. The third one's a bit of a pig. Um, the fourth one, ah, uh, yeah, special. That's all I can say about that. Is is special. Uh, when we took this, when we took it off the uh, the old wing, we ended up uh, prying the wing out of it slightly and just zipping it with the grinder because uh, for the amount of time it would have taken it just it wasn't worth it when we we're replacing with new so just bear that in mind if you do this next step over here before we put the heater box on uh i'm just gonna put this little gasket thing back in i'm gonna tidy this up a bit but just need to drill four holes and tap that on again this is just to stop water from flying through when we do the river crossings and stuff um and we'll have the same over there then we'll get this heater box on Hey Mark, we're, we're welding this in now. <laughs> I said we are welding this in now. We are welding this in. Your glamorous assistant is welding this. Yeah, yeah. So Debbie McGee, what uh, to, what initially attracted you to the multi-millionaire Paul? Right, so at the minute, we've got all the gearbox mounts, everything like that on. Uh, it's all bolted at the back. Then what we've done is we've brought the engine down, so that's sat in place. We're gonna, Mark's gonna tack weld the engine mounts on. We're gonna lift the engine out. He's gonna weld it all up tonight and everything. Then we're gonna service all the engine up, take all the sump off, clean all that, um, do everything it needs doing like that, and then put it all back together again. Then we'll find out what the wiring issues are and bits and pieces. <laughs> Better than mine. Leg length fucking not out of starters. Can't lock you in anywhere, can we, puppy? Hey? Dog's figured out how to open door handles now, so it gets everywhere. Right, so this morning, this morning, where we're at, loads done yesterday. Well, not loads done, but heavy jobs. So, thank you very much to uh, Mark. He's done a cracking job of welding these mounts in. And to do that, we had to put the transfer box onto the gearbox and get everything in and down. Thank you very much, Damo, for uh, helping us out. Got that in, got these um, just tack welded, got everything back out. Mark did the other job, just absolutely buzzing them down with the welder. We've got everything back out again. So the plan for this is new water pump, new timing belt, um, looking at doing reconditioning the turbo, unless I can get another turbo, because that one's got loads of play in it. Um, sump off, clean all around there, make sure the oil pickup's okay and everything. Uh, we've got a new lift pump, new um, oh, new all sorts. Gonna get all new pipes, get this cleaned up, get this painted up, get this looking right. Gonna go for the uh, viscous fan again, just because I've had electric fans in the past and with the water crossings that I do, I've had the connections fuzz up. 
and then the fans failed when I've actually needed it. So for the few horsepower that you lose on that, it's neither here nor there. The other thing that Damo came out with yesterday is uh, my aircon pump that was on here, because this came out of a Range Rover with aircon. Um, what he was saying was, he made himself a job, bless him. Uh, he was saying that the aircon pump can be turned into an air compressor. Uh, with a few changes and recon so he's taken that away with him and he's going to turn that into an air compressor so then I'll have a remote tank somewhere on the vehicle so that can then power the air lockers and it can also do tyre inflation and possibly power tools as well so yeah awesome nothing better than repurposing something um, we've got other little bits and pieces like we're going to have to mess about getting the um, auto gearbox cooler pipes we're gonna to have to redo them to the front and get that big thin radiator on that you'll have seen um, but that's it so far today's task first job of the day will be get this old power steering box off like I say it's up to maximum adjustment um, so bin that uh, send that back for recon and we'll put the reconditioned one that we've already got on the bench onto here We've got a new box, because looking at this, I've cleaned this up and it's still absolutely shit state. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll get a new box on there. Then on that one, we may, then once this is on, we can get the all the steering column and everything back in in place. The brakes will be on. Uh, we've got the brake bias valve, which I'm starting to lean in towards. This being the whole issue of all my brake problems, which has never been changed, even though it's been in the garage umpteen times for brakes. Um, so yeah that was probably 33 years old as well so we've got a new one of them the what else is there on here there's the heater box which is now painted up and stuff i've checked inside it uh i'm gonna put it on for now but it looks hacky i think someone's off-roaded that vehicle or had it in muddy water so i'm gonna end up getting a new radiator core to go into that heater box so that'll be ordered this week what else have we got on the chassis i know uh, mick's just said to me um Ray and him were on about changing all the brake lines on the entire vehicle, which would be nice. Um, they're thorough. They, they are. They are thorough. They, they, they go through stuff, and the, it's one of them things. I do stuff and go right. Okay, we've gone a little bit further. They go, well, why are you here? And they, they go to town on it because it's one of them things. They've got the time, if that makes sense. So that they've, they've done it in the past. They've got them decades of experience of where they've done it on the cheap or they've done it quickly to get back to work or something like that and then it's gone faulty and they've done the I wish I should have so they are now the generation where they're like just do it and it's I'll go with their advice because at the end of the day I'm learning from my mistakes and they're at the age where they've made more mistakes than me so I'll go with that oh yeah it's uh, it's coming along quite quickly I think it's gonna have a we'll do a bit today and I think next week there'll be a massive spurt and it'll be like quite far, quite far on. And then from there, I think the next thing that's going to hold us up massively, it might not, I might be just being paranoid, it'll be the wiring loom. Because I've looked at the wiring loom, it's got a new fuse board, it's gone to the blade fuse board rather than the glass fuse one. Um, yeah, we'll get that in and have a look. But you can only tell when you do it, can't you? So that's where we're at. Let's do a bit. Right, so I can't emphasise this enough when it comes to uh, working in winter. So I've just run the blowtorch over here. It's it's toasty warm, right? Not hot, just you can feel it's warm. This pot of wax oil has been sat on top of the fire, so you can see it is sloppy. I'm going to get it on straight away, let it dry, let it cool down, then it can all contract, it can all suck into each, itself. Uh, it's a good thing because when you get the blowtorch on, you'll see the damp retreating and you'll see all the, the crap and, and all the rest of it, it all, all there. Give it a good brush and stuff while it's dry and then put your wax oil on to seal it because last thing you want to do is put some thick gloopy wax oil on a freezing cold chassis that's damp because then you've got that layer of damp that's between the chassis and the wax oil. It's just not a good way of doing it. Ideal world, this is a summer job, but as you can see, it's forced my hand a bit. So that's the reasoning behind it. Make sure you get right in them little areas, because as you can imagine, I mean, you said this was slightly more orange than anywhere else where I've wire brushed it back, but when water gets in here, you can see the ridges and the traps that water can get into. So just make sure you put that bit extra. Even if you overdo it, 
you, it's better to have the crease filled up with wax oil than it is water. What you probably didn't see yesterday is when all this got welded in, we then went over uh, everything with shipping container paint uh, on the fresh metal, which Mark was saying yesterday, I can't remember exactly what it was, but the shipping container paint, it basically sticks like poo to a blanket. And not only that, I think he said it got a really, really high zinc content in it, which is, you know, like galvin something. Uh, well, not like galvin something, but better than normal paint, if that makes sense. The other paint that I'm going to have to get is some high temperature, uh, high temperature paint as well. I'm going to paint all the block up while while the engine's out. It's a good opportunity. Once you've got this wax oil in, just give it a good work around with the bristles. Make sure it gets everywhere because this is what's going to sit on your vehicle when it's sat in the cold and the damp. And this is this is what makes me chuckle when you get people saying, "Oh, you drove through the sea. That's why your Land Rover's rotten." It's like this chassis. Has never in 33 years has never had any patching, any problems, any issues, anything like that. The bulkhead was rotten when I bought the car, so it's this preventative maintenance. The previous owner, he was fanatical about looking after the chassis as well, and you can tell. Right, it's power steering boxes. Um, it's one of them things, Land Rover ones aren't right great anyway. They do tend to leak and they do tend to get play in them, e in them quite easy. So I've got this one, it's reconditioned, it's um, it's all been re-chromed on the shaft and all the bits and pieces it needs, new bearings and things. Uh, you can get these cheaper on eBay, but if you read the small print on eBay, they'll send you out some packaging, you package yours up, send it off, you have to wait for it to be reconditioned then they send it back out to you so if you're in a rush like me to get certain things done while the engine's open um then it's no good to you uh, i think there was one on ebay for about 140 quid something like that 150 quid maybe but you've got to go through that palaver whereas all i've done i've just gone to the local place maltin's off-road um and they've got them on the shelf they've got two or three of them sat there so you can bring yours in dump it on the counter they give you a fresh one you're away. Um, luckily, I've spent that much money with them in the past couple of weeks. He's just, is your recon one, bring yours back when you're done. So he has been dead right. So let's get this on now and uh, we'll stop messing. It's gone. So taking this off, you've got a pipe that goes round, that comes with the new one. You've got a pipe that goes up to the bottle and the pipe that disappears off over there. Okay, so these two have got to come off and this bottom bar. The other thing I've found is, well, no, mix found, lovely terra firma quality. Steering damper, bushing it must, there must be a little bush in there that's gone. So yet again, that's another bit of terra firma gear that's failed within 5,000 mile. Not ideal. Let us know if anybody else is getting these issues with them. Because um, like I say, these front springs have sagged to nothing. I've already replaced the back springs because as soon as I put weight on them, they sagged to their ass. And these were heavy duty as well. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on with them. They used to be really, really good make. I've had them on every vehicle that I've had for the past 15 years. And on this one, they've just failed miserably. Whether they're just not made for anything substantial and their idea of heavy duty is different to mine. But this is only, it's only three tonne. Um, so, I don't know, let us know. Right, so this off on, off here now, so there's these four bolts here, which drop that off, but as well as that, you've got this arm that goes along here and up. What we found though, is this arm is actually broken, so we're going to have to look at getting another arm to replace that which goes on to here, which stops the side to side movement by the looks of things. Then there's an arm that comes down to the steering, which goes on to here. Downside is, we couldn't get that off, this here. We couldn't get that off. So instead, we've had to take that one off. Then we're gonna get this in the vise, pull this arm off, put the arm off this one onto the new box and reassemble. Um, and I'm gonna try and get one of them brackets as well. And that's it. Give us a bit of a tidy up and everything. As you can see, everything's in, in good order. So once all this back together again, 
wax oil everything. Right, so while we're doing that, I've just sprayed everything in degreaser now. Um, <clears throat> and I'm gonna leave that on while we go play with the vice. Uh, idea is that's gonna soften up and release all the crap, all the gunk, all the oils, everything off everywhere. Uh, I can give it a quick wire brush and then rub it all down with the uh, cloths and stuff, nice and clean. Blow torch it, make sure it's all nice and dry, and then wax oil it. Um, it's just, just a bit of prep work in it, just to make sure everything stays in good order. Right, so in the end, We've got the steering box off, um, which f totally failed miserably to get the arm off the bottom of it. We tried pullers, all sorts, uh, looked on it. There was a bit of perishing on the um, <clears throat> the shroud that goes on the bearing at the bottom. So that would be an MOT fail. So that's going to be a few quid. Looked on eBay, it's 20 quid for the arm and the bearing and everything. So I'm just going to get a full new arm, bearing the lot. There's no point two of us faffing about, messing for hours on end, trying to get an arm off that's gonna cost me 10 quid more than just buying the bearing anyway. So I'll just get new. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're putting the pipes back on here and the new reservoir, because I think the old reservoir had been leaking for 20 years or something. So that's all getting replaced now. So it'll be shiny new. And in typical Land Rover fashion, when you put shiny new on, it was the grease and built up accumulated crap that was stopping a lot of the leaks. So this'll be fun. So there we go. Um, when you put in this arm back on, just bear in mind, you have to take these bolts all the way out and you'll see a little groove. To the mechanics, it's obvious. To people like me that haven't done this before, I learned something new. It's obviously a safety feature, so even if the nut comes off, the thing can't fly off. So make sure the nut's out, it'll slide on. You'll see one little bit as it's going up and down where the bolt will just drop in, tighten it up. That's that bit done. Okay, next bit, as you're putting this on, uh, the new genuine Land Rover seal, that goes between the bulkhead and the heater box is really, really thick. So that is maximum effort um, getting that in. Uh, luckily, you get the bolts 90% of the way in on the top and the bracket's grooved. So as you kind of slide it under onto them, it's maximum effort pushing up while someone puts the two bolts in. They're supposed to come that way, but by the by, we've gone in that way um, and then bolt this down so it comes in and then tighten everything up, jobs a fish. All right, so I've just sealed this section up. We've been working around here, so I'll give this a nice coat of paint and everything. Next time I'm in, I'll wax oil all that. Um, just giving a, a quick blast over with some satin paint and stuff, just because we've been scratching, touching, things like that. So heater box is on now, that's ready to be wired. Um, brakes are on now, that's ready for the bias valve, and that's back on. Steering's totally on, bar the, doo -doo 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 -doo, the arm that comes off the bottom. We're gonna get a new one of those. So pretty much, um, I think the lads are going to have a bash at servicing this while I'm at work tomorrow. So again, they're going to get the sump off, clean all the oil intake. Um, they're going to check around for anything that shouldn't be there. Um, general odds and sods. And yeah, just see what it needs. Make sure everything's in good order. Get the little bits of cable and gear selector and everything that's off the old gearbox onto the new gearbox. Um, jobs are good, and, yeah happy so if this has been useful or uh, anything like that give us a thumbs up uh, give us a comment as always it helps the analytics it lets youtube know uh, to promote this channel put it in the search and uh, like kind of set up and all the rest of it so appreciate it see you on the next one and hopefully uh, be a little bit more together uh we'll should if i'm doing a bit of a camp thing in the field at the back um yeah, do the knife giveaway or something and then go from there. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.